Well, gee willikers, how do we write a complex number that just has a real part, the number 4, and so its imaginary part is 0j? How do we write that in polar form? So let's draw a picture of it. So here's the rectangular coordinate system, and here's the real axes, and here's the imaginary axes, or x and y axes, and this says to go to the right 4, and then do not go up or down. It says 0j. So the vector that I have here looks just like that. Well, how long is that vector? Because that's what r is. Well, r is 4. And what angle is that vector at? 0 degrees in standard position. So we would say 4 at 0 degrees, or 4 times the cosine of 0 degrees plus j times the sine of 0 degrees if you wanted to light, write the longhand form of that. Now be careful. When I go put a negative sign in front of here, what I have is 0 minus 2j. So be very, very careful. Because yes, the magnitude is going to be 2. However, this vector, here's the real, here's the imaginary axis. This vector goes nowhere in this direction, but then it goes down 2 in the imaginary direction. So its length is 2 units long. However, you have to be careful when you want to tell me what angle that's at. You start from the x-axis and you go all the way around to here. So to write that um, complex number, a negative 2j, in its polar form, it is, its r value is 2, but what's its angle? It's 270 degrees. And I just kind of look at that. I go from 0 to 90 to 180 to 270, um, just because of where it lies. Okay, now let's go back in the other direction. So I now want to express a complex number. Um, oh, I'm sorry, actually this one just says, you know, write this in its full-fledged form. So just write this as 256 times the cosine of 185 degrees plus j times the sine of 185 degrees. So there it is, and it's if you will, full-fledged form. Now, take a look at this one. It's 32 units long, and it's in the first quadrant. So I'm trying to just kind of draw the first quadrant here. And it's at 56 degrees, so maybe something like this. So what I want you to give me is that ordered pair right there, or give me the x and the y values for that ordered pair to get this back into x plus y times j form. Well, all you do to get x is you take 32 times the cosine of 56.1. That will give you the x value. And then to get the j value, you'll take 32 times the sine of 56.1. Let's check those out. So, let's see if I can get this smaller a little bit, the calculator. So I'm going to move it over here. So the first one is uh, 32 times the cosine of 56.1. So that's 17.8, um, all right. And then the next one is 32 times the sine of 56.1, and that one's a positive 26.6, I think I'll call that. 26.6. There's a J here. Remember, there was a J here. And, you know, just look at this picture. This is supposed to be 17 units, and this is supposed to be 26 units when this is 32 units. My guess is my angle's a little bit bigger than 56 degrees. It's probably drawn as a 60-degree angle, but these look accurate, that this is 17.8 and this is 26.6. It's very easy. I just have to distribute. So here's an angle that's in the second quadrant. So just to think about the signs of the complex number that you're working with, 132 degrees is almost bisecting this quadrant. So this is five units in length right here. And now what I want to find out is what this x value is and what this y value is. So if you take five times the cosine of 132, 0.5 degrees, you should get a negative number. Go ahead and type it. And then if you take 5 times the sine of 132.5 degrees, you should get a positive number.
because this ordered pair right here, this x value is negative and the y value is positive. Let's see what they are. So I'll try to move my calculator here in a minute. So um, 5 times the cosine of 132.5 is a negative 3.37 and then 5 times the sine of 132.5 is um, 3.68. So remember how I said they're about the same size? Um, so what I have here is uh, a negative 3.38 and then a positive 3.69j and that is equivalent to this polar form but this is just in rectangular form. Again I expected these this one to be a negative value and I expected this one to be a positive value and I expected them to be about the same in size. Absolute value anyway. 242 degrees is in the third quadrant so if you take 78.3 times the cosine of 242 degrees you should get um, a negative 36.76 and then if you take 78.3 times the sine of 242 degrees, there is a J after that, you should also get a negative 69.1 J. Alright, so what happens if the angle is just at 0 degrees? Well, something that's 18 units long and is at zero degrees is way out here um, and so here is that vector and it just has 18 is the real part and then zero times j is the imaginary part so you could just write it as 18. So be careful this last one um, 50 at 270 degrees is something that's 50 units long this way so it's 50 units in length and it's at 270 degrees. So the real part is um, 0 and then the imaginary part is a negative 50j. Now I do want you to know if you took 50 times the cosine of 270 times the cosine of 270 you should get that 0. And then if you took 50 times the sine of 270 you should get that negative 50 that I just put here, but I didn't need to touch my calculator to do that. So what we've done is we've introduced um, complex numbers in polar form. We've taken them from rectangular form to polar form using the Pythagorean theorem and the trig function tangent. And then just now we took them from polar form back to rectangular form by just distributing the r value times the cosine of the angle and the r value times the sine of the angle. We're going to introduce in our next section exponential form of complex numbers and why it's so easy to multiply and divide and raise to a power a complex number in this form.